Hello, my good friends. Mike Shreve here, founder and head troublemaker of the No Pants Show and the No Pants Project and the No Pants Project blog.com. <laughs> you are listening to episode number three of the No Pants Show, where we're going to be talking about how to get out of overwhelm, how to refocus, and how to push through to clarity. No matter how frustrated or confused or lost you might feel. Because here's something that I can guarantee. When you do something special, when you do something out of the ordinary, like creating a business or, uh, or just really any creative endeavor, like literally the process of making a painting is the same, has the same pitfalls and hazards and dangers as building a business, right? Creating a business is a creative endeavor, just like creating a piece of art. Okay. So when you make a piece of art or when you build a business guaranteed, if you are pushing your boundaries, meaning pushing yourself beyond just the bare minimum, doing something extra special, something meaningful, something important, I guarantee that you will feel frustration overwhelm, confusion, you'll feel lost, you will feel like, why am I doing this? I don't even know what's going on anymore. That is a natural, and I think beautiful, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. It is a natural reaction to growth, which is what's required to make something creative, like a business or a piece of art or fiction or whatever it is that you're creating. I don't think a lot of people understand this, that when you sit down to create, you know, a lot of great creators have said it rather poetically when, you know, for example, all you have to do is just uh, sit down to the page and bleed, or I left a part of myself in this painting, or, you know, they say it very poetically, but really what they're talking about is that every time you sit down to create something, you grow as a person. And growth by definition is slightly painful, right? You remember your teenage years, the growing pains? There's a really good story uh, that is taught by a rabbi. It went viral recently. Um, about, uh, you know, the lobster uh, shedding its shell. And that's not necessarily a pain-free experience, but by shedding its shell and getting a new one, it becomes stronger and et cetera, and et cetera. You may have seen that already. The point that I'm trying to make here is every time you make something, you grow and a natural part of growth is overwhelm. And that's okay. First off, it's okay that that's happening to you. Nothing's wrong if you're feeling overwhelmed. It's simply a symptom of growth. In today's episode, what I want to do is I want to give you a bunch of tools to manage that feeling so that you can snap out of overwhelm and get to clarity as soon as possible. I believe that overwhelm has four different sources, and by addressing each individual source, you can uh, work strategies to minimizing the negative effects of those sources. So first source is the physical. The second is your environment. The third is emotional and the fourth is mental. So those are the four sources from which overwhelm, frustration, confusion, fogginess can flourish or the the sources where they come from. So let me give you some examples. Number one, physical. Whenever I feel overwhelmed or frustrated or confused or what am I going to do? The first thing that I do is I check my physical state, my physiological, my physiological state, my physical being, my body. One, I ask myself, when was the last time I had a drink of water? A lot of people don't understand when you're dehydrated, your brain sends out the same stress response chemicals, signifiers, signals to your body that any other stressful situation creates. So let me say that in a much better way than how I just said it. When you're dehydrated, you're stressed. Oftentimes, 
Overwhelm comes from being stressed out. Because stress causes confusion because Stress, your body's response to stress is to stop thinking critically. So the part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex that does all the creative work, that can uh, uh, show empathy, that can uh, make connections between disparate ideas, that can uh, make something out of nothing, that can come up with solutions to problems, that part of your brain begins to shut down, not turn off, but uh, energy and focus is, is transferred away from that part of your brain. And that energy and focus is then put onto your survival brain. It's called the lizard brain, which is to say, you go from I can think these great thoughts and find solutions to my problems to now I just need to survive. And when that part of your brain is engaged and making decisions for you, that's when you start to get confused about things. That's when you start to feel overwhelmed. That's when you start to make bad decisions and you think to yourself, why did I just make that decision? Well, it's because the smarter part of your brain isn't actually working. So stress is what causes that transfer from prefrontal cortex to your lizard brain. And being dehydrated causes physiological stress. So first thing you have to do is check, have I, am I hydrated, right? If you're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated, how's your body doing? Are you hydrated? Number two, same thing with food, right? Intermittent fasting is very popular and I am doing it right now. Um, it's, it's incredible and it works amazing, but you have to be careful when you do something like intermittent fasting or when you haven't eaten in a long time or when you've eaten bad food. For example, if you eat food that's high in sugar and you have a sugar crash, now you've got this mental fog happening. Of course you're overwhelmed and frustrated and confused and don't know what's going on. has nothing to do with your business. It's just your, your brain is fried from a sugar high. Caffeine. If you have caffeine, what's happening? It's a stress stimulant. So, uh, and well, not only is it a stress stimulant, but it also suppresses, I believe it's a chemical called adesine. Adesine is what creates what's called sleep pressure. Sleep pressure is basically your it's more of your biological clock than any other factor that contributes to sleep, at least as, as far as um, it's understood today, which is to say caffeine suppresses your body rhythm. So again, if you're feeling confused and overwhelmed and where am I going and what am I doing? And da, 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 there are physiological things going on. If you're not watching out for what you're eating, how hydrated you are, Are you taking stimulants, caffeine, not to mention alcohol, drugs, etc. So if I feel overwhelmed, the first thing I do is I start checking my physics. What did I eat? Oh, well, that's, you know, that's why I'm overwhelmed. I need to eat better later tonight. Or I need to hydrate. Next is, still on physical here, have I moved my body at all? So if you've just been sitting all day at the computer, your body has a reaction to stasis. Meaning, you can find clarity and remove brain fog by just getting up and moving around. There's three types of movement that I recommend. First is just your standard exercise. You've heard it a million times. People say, I exercise in the morning and I feel super clear for the rest of the day. That's a real thing. That's not just people talking out their backsides. (laughs) So physical exertion can create mental clarity. If you aren't doing it, it's not surprising that you feel overwhelmed a lot. And it doesn't have to be like just go for a walk in the morning or just clean up your house in the morning 
which you'll find is uh, m- might contribute to number two, the environment. But do something to move your body, okay? Additionally, exercise helps to combat certain pain. So if you have back pain, exercise will help you to minimize some of that pain. Obviously, consult a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I have personally found exercise to be helpful in the reduction of pain that can come from sitting at a desk all day. And so again, if you're feeling pain, what does pain do? It causes stress in the brain. What happens when stress is happening in the brain? Prefrontal cortex starts to shut down and we're into the lizard brain and no wonder we're confused and overwhelmed and can't get our work done. The second type of movement that I like to do is just move every hour. So what I like to do is every hour, um, I will get up from my desk and do some push-ups, walk up and down the stairs, or what I like to do is combine this with the third type of movement, which is moving with another person. So for example, what I do is I, if my son's home from school, we have this little, one of those tiny little basketball hoops that you put on the door. And my son's only six and we just, we play like basketball up to 20 points and I'll do that. Or I'll come down and chase the kids around the house for five, 10 minutes and then go back up to work. Moving with other people kills two birds with one stone. One is it helps with emotional, mental, uh, connection, which again, engages the prefrontal cortex because that's where our empathy lives. And so we're engaging the higher form or the, I don't know how you would say that. It's, it's basically the more intelligent part of our brain, the problem solving unit of our brain. The more we engage it, the more it stays engaged. So by moving around with my kids and playing with my kids or um, having dance parties with my wife and my kids just in the middle of the day, just because it's hilarious, that engages the mental aspect, the, the higher, the problem solving unit of our brain. But then also I get the physiological benefits from moving my body. Okay. So if I'm ever, I'm feeling, and you may think like, okay, well that's great when your life is perfect, but what about when things are really, really bad and you're feeling like I need to make money tomorrow and I'm super overwhelmed and what do I do? What I'm telling you is this is what I do when I'm in that scenario. These are the strategies to get out of overwhelm. I'm not overwhelmed when things are going great, right? (laughs) I don't think anybody is feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and confused. And what am I going to do when things are going great? This is the weird thing about being a human is that often the way out of bad stuff is this. These kinds of things that don't seem like that's the answer. Because you think to yourself, ah, the answer is I need to get money. The answer is I need this person to close. The answer is I need this to work. Well, the answer is that you can't make it work. You can't close the deal. You're not going to get the client until you arm yourself with the clarity of mind that you need. And you can create that clarity of mind by doing these things. Okay, so that's physical. That's, that's the first thing that I check. Number two, the second thing that I check when I am feeling overwhelmed is my environment. The environment is so important. If you did nothing for the next year except raise your awareness and consciousness around your environment to see through the matrix, as it were, at how everything around you is affecting you. Sam Harris has an interesting argument about, he questions whether free will really is a thing. Uh, Part of his argument is that environment has such an impact on us as human beings that 
it is almost an illusion to assume that we can act independently of our environment. Let me give you an example. Somebody who grows up in an abusive relationship, it's very difficult for that person to not be affected by that abuse. My anecdotal experience, not scientifically proven experience, my anecdotal experience is that it's impossible to not be affected in some way by an abuser in in an abusive relationship. That's how important and how influential environment is. So if you're feeling lost and confused and overwhelmed and you don't know what to do, it might be that your environment is causing the confusion. And there's no amount of mental willpower that is going to overcome the environmental inputs that are causing this reaction of overwhelm. So what you have to do is instead of trying to beat it out in your brain and tough it out and grind it out and not, you know, figuring it out in between your ears, what you have to do is actually go to the environment and make adjustments in your environment. Here's the adjustments that I look for. One, did I go outside? The environment that most of us spend most of our time in is rather toxic for our mental and emotional well-being. Artificial lighting, unnaturally comfortable chairs, no fresh air, no natural sounds, like all of these things contribute to a decrease in mental capacity and emotional resilience. And to give you an example of proof of this concept, aside from the studies that you can just go find yourself online, just go Google research, solitary confinement in prisons has been demonstrated again and again to contribute to very serious mental and emotional problems. So it exacerbates whatever problem there may have been. Now, please don't get me wrong. Solitary confinement in a prison is the extreme of what we put ourselves through on a daily basis, though. So if you consider solitary confinement, you don't get to go outside. You're confined to a small space. There's very little natural lighting. There's very little natural air. There's very few nature sounds, et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. Many of us put ourselves into solitary, a form of solitary confinement by sitting in front of a computer, no natural lighting, small room, no, et cetera, et cetera. So environment number one is stop putting yourself in solitary confinement because that is negatively affecting your mental and emotional capacity and is probably why you're feeling overwhelmed and confused and et cetera. So go outside. Just don't even do it. Like I just go stand outside and just let the sun or the rain or whatever weather is happening just be on my body for a second. Take a deep breath of the natural air. Even when we live downtown in the city, the nat- the different smells that come from the cars and the people and the all these, I mean, that is a way to wake your brain up to engage that problem-solving portion of your brain is to go experience really senses to have a an experience where you are feeling things and hearing things and smelling things instead of just thinking of things it gives your brain enough of a time to sort of rest and relax while still staying alert and engaged that oftentimes I'll go out and just go outside for five seconds and the problem will be solved in my subconscious and I've only been out for like a few, literally a few seconds just being outside all of a sudden I'm like, oh okay I know what the problem is let me go fix it that's number one number two is in my environment I look at my desk and especially my computer. So if you work a lot on a computer, your computer is an environment. 
How many notifications are you getting? Um, How easy is it to access your email? Do you have social media blockers on? Are you tracking your time? Like all of these different things, the computer itself is an environment. Are your file folders all over the place and crazy and confusing? Is it difficult for you to access your own information? Are there just distractions everywhere? What is the wallpaper on your desktop? All of this stuff contributes to your brain's ability to think clearly. And when you're overwhelmed, that's the opposite of thinking clearly. So I check what's going on in my computer environment. And then I check what's going on on my desk around me. So I used to have a really bad habit early on in my writing career where I would have a ton of books on my desk. There was even a point where my desk faced my bookshelf. Now, the problem with that is I really like books. So I was literally facing all of my temptations. It was difficult for me to have a single train of thought because as I would begin to think, I would see a book over here and see a book over there and then I'd start thinking about that book and then I'd pick up the book, I'd read five pages and 45 minutes later, I forgot what I was originally thinking. And now I'm like, oh no, I'm lost, I'm confused. Now I'm frustrated. Where where I was clear about 40 minutes ago, now I'm just all over the place. One of the things that I think people assume to be true which isn't, is that more information will give you clarity. Oftentimes, more information leads to overwhelm and confusion. So in your environment, on your computer, on your desk, in in whatever it is that you're doing, are you simply overwhelmed with information. When you try to sit down to take a course, to watch a video online, do you have 50 tabs open with all of the other people's ideas about that same concept and and, 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 and you're try- and you like you watch one for 2 minutes then you jump to the other one, you watch it for 5 minutes and you jump to another one, you watch that for 5 minutes and here you are trying to like do some research to get some clarity and now you're more confused than ever. It's because you're pulling from too many sources at the same time. Now, I'm not advocating that people stop consuming information. I'm not advocating that you only pull from one source. I am, however, advocating that you pull from one source at a time. That you're more mindful and thoughtful and you do more analysis of the information that you consume instead of piling on information for the sake of information. See, so many people, all they do is they collect information. They never analyze it. They never. So uh, there's a really interesting idea, and I don't know who the source of this idea is. I'm sure it's not. I I doubt it's it's even new within the last hundred years. It's probably like a two or three hundred year old idea. But it's this idea of The scholar who just sits and reads books and books and books and books and books versus the scholar who spends his entire career reading one book. Which one has a deeper, more clear sense of whatever it is they're trying to figure out? Let's say of of, of a specific um, idea that's in the book. Well, probably the person who read the one book 500 times. Because they've had time to process the information, not just collect it. You see this in today's society where we're, we have lots of access to social media. We have lots of access to the 24-hour news cycle, and etc. And people can spout off talking points rather easily because they consume a lot of surface-level information. But if you were to actually try and have a meaningful, deep conversation where you're like, okay, I understand your talking points, but what's the solution to the problem? They can't actually come up with solutions. It's not because they're not smart people. It's because 
They've only collected information. They haven't processed it. They haven't thought it over. They haven't meditated on it. So this is about environment and how it's related to your being overwhelmed is if you're just an information junkie and you have an environment that's set up to just allow the free consumption of information, information, information. And let me be honest, information as a form of procrastination, instead of an environment which is set up where you can go on your computer, find a piece of information, close your computer, go to another part of your environment that's just a pen and a paper, and you just sit there and think on that one piece of information, it's no wonder that you feel overwhelmed. So the way I have my desk set up is I have my stand-up desk, I have a laptop, and then I have a a pen and paper, and there are three different stations within my office. So the stand-up desk is where I try to do most of my work because I like being engaged and active physically. I kind of hop around and, you know, that that kind of thing, move my legs and stretch and all that kind of stuff while I'm on the computer. But sometimes I just want to sit down, and so I have um, I have a completely separate uh, station for that in my in, I don't know, station sounds official. It's more just like a spot on my desk because <laughs> I have one of those long picnic table desks also on top of my stand up desk and I have a little laptop and that's where I do some work as well. That's good for taking a break, taking a breather, but I don't like working on my laptop. So I never stay in that station for very long. Then I have uh, a completely separate station with my most comfortable chair And it's literally the corner of my room. So there's no distractions, whatever. The blank wall, I don't even have anything up on my wall. It's a corner of my room. It's at the corner of the desk where all I do is I just go and think on paper. So I learned that originally from Jim Rohn. He has a concept called thinking on paper. There's lots of YouTube videos about him on the uh, interwebs. You should go check that out. Uh, Thinking on paper by Jim Rohn. And all I do is I just process the information. I process my thoughts. Sometimes it's in the form of journaling. Sometimes it's literally just in the form of a piece of paper. We'll talk about that here in a second. We talk about what I call brain dumps. But that's the environment that I've set up for myself because what I want to do is spend most of my time with a piece of pen, with a piece of paper and a pen, processing the information and making clear, actionable goal items. There are so many people who are so much smarter than me. Like they know so much more information. But they don't have a no pants project. They don't have a successful freelancing business. They don't have a lot of what they want. And it's simply because they've just consumed the information. They haven't actually done anything with it. So part of overwhelm and environment is about being aware of this information process and setting yourself up so that you can take that information and actually do something about it. All right, number three is when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I check in with my emotional state of mind, my emotional being. Uh, Those of you who are religious, you might also throw in spiritual. So this is emotional and spiritual. One of the things that I check first off, if I'm feeling confused or frustrated or whatever, is there a conversation that I should be having right now? I ask myself that question. Is there a conversation that I should be having right now? What I mean by that is, is there some open loop in which I need to solve tension? Is there someone I need to talk to who has wronged me? Is there what I call, uh, what are called, excuse me, what are called collision conversations, which is to say, if you had the conversation, there would be a tremendous amount of clarity from that conversation. So for example, oftentimes we as human beings 
self-process signals and make assumptions. So if we go to a party, someone doesn't talk to us, we come away from that party, we say that person hates me, they don't like me, well, I don't like them. And then we have this whole conversation in our head. And what has happened is we've created confusion and fog and ambiguity because we know that we're just kind of grasping at straws, right? Like we're just making stuff up in our head and we, we get in this circle spiral and that doesn't just go away. That lingers in our mind and it lingers as a distraction. For some people, it lingers as an obsession. Like I know a lot of people who, you know, should have collision conversations just to free themselves of this obsession that they've had over something that may, may or may not have even happened. But a collision conversation is going in and having the conversation with the person who ignored you at the party and saying, that really hurt. And I don't know what's going on, but why did you ignore me? Because that super sucks. And now all I can think about is how much that hurt my feelings or whatever. Through that conversation, clarity will happen. Even if the person is a total jerk and they say, well, yeah, I didn't want to talk to you. Ha ha ha. Well, now, you know, now it's not guessing. Now it's not. You can close that relationship off or you can decide if you want to work for it, etc. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your kid. Maybe you need to have a conversation with your spouse. Maybe you've got money problems that you need to face with your partner. And you need to have a collision conversation and say, okay, this thing's been weighing on my mind and we need to talk about it. What are we doing here? That can negatively affect your ability to focus in your business. Even though it's not related at all. This is why I check. If I'm feeling overwhelmed and confused about my business or about something I'm being creative on, I don't just check in the closed circle, the closed loop of business. I check all aspects of my life. What are the conversations I should be having? It will allow you to get clarity so that you can let that go. And and nine times out of 10, you'll get the clarity in your business by getting the clarity in some other aspect of your life. But make no mistake, collision conversations are very difficult. Maybe we'll have another episode some other time about that. Some other questions that I ask myself when it comes to emotional, is there a relationship that needs to be repaired? So guilt is a very powerful tool in making things very confusing. I know a lot of people who would be absolutely amazing at business if they could let go of the guilt. I don't deserve the money. I don't deserve to be successful because when I was 14, I wronged somebody in some way. And if I'm successful and, you know, my name gets out there, oh my gosh, I might be afraid that they'll come find me and... Is there a relationship that you need to repair? Because if you're operating in that mental space of, I can't be successful because then the person that I did something wrong to, or the, you know, uh, people know me back then and I was a total goof and, you know, I was a C student all the time. And now if I say things and, you know, whatever, that will cause confusion. Because if you feel guilty about being successful and then you're doing things trying to be successful, your brain's like, what? I don't know which signal to, to follow. And then something simple like, hey, get on Facebook Live and talk about the cool stuff you do for people. All of a sudden, that very simple thing becomes this huge, overwhelming battle. And you likely just don't get it done. 
that's when the business starts to suffer from your personal life. Another thing I check in with emotional is I just check in with burnout versus balance. So I find uh, diminishing returns after a certain number of hours worked in a day, which is to say my frustration and overwhelm increases after a certain number of hours focused on any given problem. Problem. Now, let me be clear, that doesn't mean I don't sometimes work a lot in a day. I just typically don't work a lot on a single problem in a day. So I think what happens to a lot of people is they obsess over a single problem for too much time. And oftentimes, if they can't find the solution straight away, that obsession becomes circular thinking. And that circular thinking causes overwhelm and confusion and frustration. And they would have been much better off if they had just stopped for a second, gone and accomplished something else to get a boost of self-esteem, and then come back to the problem. So for example, you guys know, right now I've got a really big problem in one, in one of my businesses. And I'm doing a podcast at the same time. There's a reason for that. This podcast is my uh, saving grace, you could say, in a lot of ways, of getting me out of potentially falling into the trap of circular thinking. I go do a podcast. I feel great. Oh my gosh, we did a podcast. It's great. It's going to help somebody. Awesome. I feel that uh, boost of self-esteem. And then I go back to the bigger problem. Did I lose anything by focusing on building this podcast instead of spending an extra 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half worrying about that problem? No, I'm giving my subconscious a, a break. I'm creating something positive that will build my one of my other businesses, right? Like it's all productive even when it's not productive. But burnout and balance is important. Sometimes the key to getting through overwhelm is to just take a break. Like just stop for a second. Go do something fun. I can't tell you, and, and, and I'm not saying that you should do this, so please keep, you know, I know that I'm a weird person and I do things differently. But some, there have been times in the past where my businesses have been financially strapped, which is common for any business. You have highs and lows. There are times to sow and there are times to reap. That's just the natural cycle of, of life. It's not all, you know, a straight line up to success forever and ever. But there's been times where things have looked financially dubious. And again, I'm not recommending this as a financial strategy or whatever. This is just what has worked for me. Things have been financially scary. And so what I do is I take my family out to dinner to just have fun. We, we call them celebration dinners, which is hilarious because <laughs> there's not really much to celebrate, but we just celebrate being alive and being together. And we just, all of us, because when you run a business and you have a spouse and you have kids, if you're having a hard time, your whole family will feel it in some way. You're feeling a little bit more cranky. You're feeling you're not you're, you're not yourself because there's problems you have to solve. And so we just go and for a couple of hours, we go somewhere fun. Maybe we'll go watch a movie too or something like that. We have a celebration dinner and all we do is we just take a break. Now, if a traditional financial advisor will say that's a horrible, that's the worst time to spend money is when things are financially dubious. And Again, I would say this is not for everybody. But for us, the investment is taking a break and finding that balance. Because what helps us more than anything, at least for how our family does it, is it helps us to put things into perspective. Sometimes you're overwhelmed because you've lost perspective. Things that deep down in your gut you know aren't that important in the moment feel like the most important thing in the world, and that can be confusing. 
that in and of itself can make you feel overwhelmed. Because on the one hand, you're like, I know this isn't that important, but it feels like the most important thing in the world. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do with all this other stuff that actually is important? Oh, I'm doomed. This is never going to work. If I can't get this simple thing, how am I going to get the complex thing? We're, you know, forget it. And that's where overwhelm can come from. It's another source, right? That's all we're doing is we're looking at all the different sources. We're checking in on these different sources and then we're trying to come up with solutions to sort of cut the source off at the head. So that doesn't contribute to more overwhelm. Okay, and then lastly for emotional, I just check who I'm spending time with. So if I have people who are negative and I'm spending a lot of time with them, that can contribute to confusion and overwhelm. Especially if those people do not support the thing I'm doing. So if I'm trying to start a new business and someone's like, that's a horrible idea, that will make me feel confused about what I'm doing. Here's how to solve that. Just don't hang out with them for a second. You don't have to cut off your relationship forever, but maybe right now in this moment of confusion, that's not helping. The inputs that you allow into your mind and body are responsible for most of what you experience. So it's so important to be mindful of all of the inputs that you are allowing into your, you could call it your ecosystem, mind, body, connection, that whole thing. Okay, so that's emotional. Lastly here, this will be our last one to wrap up. I check my mental well-being and the, and the mental sources of potential confusion. So oftentimes, oftentimes what happens for me, and this may be the same for you, is that I feel overwhelmed and confused because I have so many ideas rolling around in my head. I could do this, I could do that, but then I need to do this and then I need to do that. And then here's this checklist over here and here's the nine things I have to do over here. But then I heard this person say I should do that and this person said I should try that and da 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 And one of the big problems is that your brain can't process that many different pieces of information in a meaningful way. Remember we talked about earlier just information consumption and then not doing anything about it? The brain is a very, very, very powerful machine. An absolutely powerful machine. The fact that we can vocalize anything meaningful is 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 a is just incredible if you look at it from a uh, evolutionary standpoint it's why we still exist why homo sapiens still exist is because we were able to vocalize our ideas allowed us to organize and then it allows us to create things but there's a problem with our brain And that as powerful as it is, it's also a very simple machine. So it is very easily overwhelmed with different ideas and thoughts. But it's really good at processing externally. So this is what I do. It's called a brain dump. You've probably heard it before. If I just am like so overwhelmed, I just don't know what's going on. I don't even know what my problem is. I don't even know where I should be going or what I should be doing. Here's what I do. I take a yellow notepad and a pen. I sit in my little corner in my office and I just write every single thing down that's going on in my head. Everything. It doesn't even have to be correlated. Like, this is going to sound funny to people, but in December, um, we were, I had just been ripped off from those guys for about 55 grand 
and that caused some cash flow issues in the business. Obviously, I mean that's a, that's not that's not no money. Fifty five thousand dollars is a lot of money, and so uh, there was a lot of just stuff going on in my brain. Where am I going? What am I going to do? How's this going to work? Is the business even going to stay afloat anymore? And there's all sorts of things flying around in my mind. At the same time, Christmas was coming, and we were hiring someone to put lights on our house for the first time because I'd kind of always wanted to see like what a professional does. And literally, the hiring someone to put lights on our house suddenly became like this huge thing. It, the brain, my brain had somehow made that the main thing to do. And so I was having like this weird moment of overwhelm where I was like, save the business or, oh yeah, what about the light? So what I did to solve that is I just got down on a piece of paper and I just started writing everything down. And what I do in a brain dump is first I just get it all out on, on paper. Then I start making a checklist of things and then I prioritize a checklist of things. And I can tell you for, it's, it's such an incredible activity. When you get it out of your brain, your mind stops thinking about it because it knows, okay, we've, we filed it somewhere. It's on this piece of paper. When it's on a piece of paper, you can do stuff with it. You can organize it. You can analyze it and say, is this really a high priority? And so brain dump is taking it all out of your head, putting it on a paper and then playing with it on the paper. Sometimes I'll cut out the, th- the and like make little, little, literally pieces of paper that I can move around on a, on an empty desk and just think things through, but doing it, trying to do that in my head, impossible. It's just impossible. So I get it out of my brain as soon as possible. It's called a brain dump. Thing number two to check my mental state of, of, of mind is mindfulness, meditation. Again, building up the skill to not let every single thought that pops into my head control my actions or not reacting to every single thought that pops into my head. That in and of itself, just the ability to let go of random thoughts can prevent a lot of overwhelm because you just don't let the, the circular cycle of thinking get started. So if I haven't meditated in a while and I'm starting to see that overwhelm is creeping up, I'm like, okay, you know what? I forgot. I haven't meditated in a couple days. I'm going to take the time right now, 5, 10, 15 minutes, headspace app, um, you know, do my little, <laughs> my little meditation and then rebuilding that, that, um, that skill. Here's the last thing that I do to check in on my mental uh, state of mind to prevent or fix overwhelm and get clarity. I allow myself to get really, really bored. So Neil Gaiman, who's an author, one of my favorite authors, he says that if he's struggling with writer's block or struggling to create something, he has found that the more bored he lets himself get, the easier it is to make something. And that basically his argument is we live in a very easy to be distracted world. And so we go to social media, we go to YouTube, we go to to the email, we go to all of these other things that distract us. We watch the news because the drama of news is fun. We watch TV. We There's all these inputs that we put into our body to distract us. And the distraction is simply distracting us from actually solving the problem. But we want to solve the problem, but we're afraid of solving the problem. And the distractions seem easier. So Neil Gaiman's approach is basically he cuts himself off from everything and has a pen and a notepad. He's seeing a theme here, pen and a notepad. And he just waits until he's so bored that he has to write something. I have found that to be a highly useful tactic in the creative process, which is creative from an art standpoint in terms of making things, but also creative in solving problems for your business. Removing yourself from distractions, sitting there with a piece of paper and a pen and saying, let's solve this. 
It's not more information. When Neil Gaiman can't write, he's not going and like, let me go check out five more books on how to write a story. He's not going and watching 15 more movies for inspiration. That's all procrastination. What he does, he says, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to get myself bored enough that my brain goes from desperately grabbing at distractions to making the shift. It's almost like the, you can hear the gears turn. Nah, 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 nah. Now we're in problem solving mode. But it takes a minute for your brain to adjust, especially if you are used to spending a significant amount of time distracting yourself. It takes a minute to get out of that mode. Okay, my dear friends, that is it. For today's episode, there are four sources that you need to check to help refocus and get yourself out of overwhelm. The first is check your physical and your physiological state of being. Step number two or the thing to check is your environment, what's going on around you. Number three, check your emotional state of mind and well-being. And then number four is check your mental state of mind and well-being. All right, my dear friends, that is it for me today. This was episode three of the No Pants Show If you'd like help in building your own business as a creative freelancer, as I've done to make multiple thousands of dollars per month, visit the nopantsproject.com and you'll check out a case study of how I built my business at $26,500 per month. And the number is not nearly as important as how I built that business to be focused on not just making money, but helping to make a healthy person. It's a business that has been a natural extension of my life rather than trying to fit my life into the business. So a lot of what we talked about is possible because of that freelancing business that I created. And when I mean possible, I mean it has allowed me the time to be introspective, to do the personal work that has taken me from a really bad place. Um, I had a lot of stuff wrong with my mindset, just the way I had grown up and the the ideas that I had been exposed to and the ideas that I had uh, latched on to. And fortunately, freelancing allows you to build a business that's good for you. Because there's lots of different businesses that you can build that's just not good for you. (laughs) Like, there's a lot of people I see burn out and just it's it's bad right freelancing however is probably one of the few business models where flexibility for doing that kind of work on yourself is possible Um, and you can still earn you know doctor and lawyer level incomes there's a really interesting article put out by Adweek I believe it's called the rise of the something about the golden age of the six figure freelancer or something. Highly recommend that you read that article. Um, One fifth of all freelancers make more than six figures per year. That's 3.2 million people. So if you'd like to learn how we did it or how I did it and how I teach my uh, students to do so, um, we had a student today post up. uh, He made his first $10,000 month as a freelancer. It's really, really exciting. Uh, Congratulations to that person. I think he knows who he is. He's earned every cent of it. Uh, He's also a coach in one of our other programs um, because he's just been done so well. But anyways, the point is, uh, it's not uncommon to have a successful freelancing business that also fits within your lifestyle. And uh, if you go to the nopantsproject.com, you can find a case study on how I've been able to do that. You also see 18 other case studies where you will find out how some of my students and mentees and clients have done uh, the the success stories that they've gotten and how they've gone about uh, creating their lifestyle business as well. And then lastly, of course, if you go to the nopantsprojectblog.com, that's the nopantsprojectblog.com, we are trying our best to serve as many people as possible with information on helping them to get started as well. So that's it for me, my friends. This has been episode three of the No Pants Show how to refocus when feeling overwhelmed. Hope you've enjoyed it. We've got these coming to you daily. And I hope that you have a wonderful and awesome day.